What if you had a guide who could tell you how to bridge a gap between who you are today and who you're destined to be? What if each week you could hear a story of someone who has tried and succeeded, or perhaps tried and failed, but learned something in the process? Limitless Spirit is a weekly podcast where host Helen Todd interviews guests about topics and personal stories on defining life's purpose, pursuing personal growth, and developing a deeper faith in Christ. The doctor called me and said that he had some results from some tests and he needed me to come in. So when I got there, he uh, expressed to me that he had done a test for MS and that it came back positive. And at that moment, I just felt like, I felt like (laughs) I, I cried. I was overwhelmed. And at the time, I was just going through a lot in my mind and my heart. I knew that God had called me to, you know, do missions and, you know, uh, to a international ministry. But I was just at a loss as to how in this condition was I going to do what God really called me to do. Welcome to the Limitless Spirit podcast. I'm your host, Helen Todd. We completed our series, That's Kingdom, and had an incredible conference uh, on this particular subject. Uh, We do have recordings available online, which you can request if you are not able to attend the conference. Just email me at podcast at rfwma.org to request the links. In the meantime, we are back to our original series, Change Lives. Change Lives, where I interview different people whose lives have been transformed by Christ in a very powerful way, and in return, that equipped them to touch the lives of others. So in this episode, I talk with America Quinn, who is a wife, a mother, and also a minister of the gospel. In her youth, she felt called to serve God and preach the gospel in the nations around the world. But America's faith was tested when she was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. And as a registered nurse, she had seen firsthand the physical effects of MS and was unsure if she would ever be able to fulfill God's calling and missions. But God has opened the door for her and also taught her some valuable lessons during this challenging season. So... In this episode, you will hear the story of America's diagnosis and what fruit she has able she uh, was able to bear in this specific season of her life. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Limitless Spirit podcast. Good morning, America. Welcome to the Limitless Spirit podcast. How are you this morning? I'm doing great, Dr. Helen. Thank you for inviting me. Well, we just saw each other a few days ago at the Greater Purpose Conference, and what a powerful time that was. Did you enjoy it as much as I did? Oh, my God. I went last year, and it just was nothing even in comparison to last year. This was just such a move of God. It was wonderful. I enjoyed everything. Well, and I think uh, our theme, That's Kingdom, was so timely. I know that I received a lot during that conference. I'm still processing it in my mind and looking forward to summarizing my thoughts. But I agree with you. It was definitely a very powerful move of God. We are back to our original series called Changed Lives change lives. And I really wanted to highlight your story in this podcast. You know, when I first met you uh, in person on the mission trip in Mexico last year, one thing that stood out to me right from the beginning is what a powerful intercessor you are. I love to hear you pray. I feel like you go right into the throne room of God with your prayers. And I believe that this type of tenacity in prayer comes from your story. Uh, would you agree? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I agree totally. I couldn't have been in a level of prayer that God has allowed me to come into without having gone through some of the trials and uh, challenges and struggles that I've gone through. Well, and I think just the very fact that you were on a mission trip in a foreign country is already 
a miracle and a great witness of what God can accomplish in a person's life and through a person too. Well, let's dive into your story. So at a very young age, you were diagnosed with MS. How did how did that come about? Actually, it was when I was turning 40. I think I think exactly when I was turning 40. Um, and that's the age when you're most likely to be diagnosed. And um, I have been suffering with some other illnesses and MS could have been, you know, in my body some time back. And it's just maybe didn't manifest until around that time between 39 and 40. And I had ended up taking a flu shot because I had other autoimmune diseases. They said that it would probably be good that I take the flu shot. And I'd never taken one before in my whole life. And so I took the doctor's advice and took the flu shot. And it was maybe a little while after that, that I um, noticed I had some tingling in one of my feet. And I thought it was maybe my foot had fallen asleep or, you know, something like that. But within, that was maybe Monday when I realized the tingling. Well, by the time Friday came, the tingling had transferred from one foot to the other foot, all the way up my legs to my waist. And I was feeling really weak and just weird. And so I had decided to go to the hospital to get it checked out because it seemed like it was traveling upward. And by the time I got to the hospital, I was not able to use the restroom. I was not, I was barely able to walk. They put me in a wheelchair and everything was progressing really fast, but they didn't know why. And so they did a test and then they ended up admitting me. I stayed there like five days. They did some steroid treatment and I, I kind of recovered, you know, um, I guess because I didn't know what was going on. I just was determined that this was just something that was happening and I was going to get over it. And I kind of recovered pretty fast that first time because they said it was some other, they thought maybe Lyme disease or transverse myelitis or something like that. Well, the next year, or the next fall, I took another flu shot, not knowing that that may have been the cause so of it. After that first incident, you recovered. You regained your mobility eventually? Yes, I did. I recovered. I, I walked with the walker for a little bit, but I, I recovered kind of quickly because they caught it fast. They were telling me if I hadn't come to the hospital and it had progressed upward towards my lungs, it could have paralyzed my breathing and all that. But I got there in time for them to give me the steroid treatments and reverse everything. Well, the second time I took the flu shot, the same symptoms occurred. But I wasn't I was thinking, OK, something's really wrong because this shouldn't be happening twice. Because what they diagnosed me with was transverse myelitis, which is an acute neurologic disease that would never happen but one time. So I knew it couldn't be that again. So I went to the emergency room and this particular hospital, the doctor decided to admit me and do a uh, lumbar puncture and some other in-depth tests and test me for MS. But I didn't know he had tested me for MS. They treated me. I stayed there maybe six days or so. And they were looking to transfer me to a rehabilitation facility because I wasn't bouncing back as fast as I did the first time. I was really weak in my legs. It was hard for me to walk and it was hard for me to get around and you know all that. And so I was just concerned about being away from my children, being in a rehabilitation place. They did let me go home and I worked. They sent the uh, physical therapy nurses there, everything to kind of help me get back on my feet. And it took a little while. But they called me from the uh, the doctor called me and said that he had some results from some tests and he needed me to come in. Well, I wasn't sure what it was about, but I figured it was serious because the doctor right. called me. So when I got there, he uh, expressed to me that he had done a test um, unbeknownst to me for MS and that it came back positive. And at that moment, I just felt like I felt like <laughs> I, I cried. I was overwhelmed. And because I was a nurse, I had taken care of people with MS. So automatically patients that I had cared for came back to my mind, their condition, their state of disability. And I thought, God, I don't want to end up like that. And so I, it took a while for me to digest the fact that I was dealing with a debilitating illness and I didn't want any treatment. You know, I was believing God, I'm, I'm going to be fine. You know, I kind of took that route. And the doctor told me, he said, if you do not take treatment, the way the disease came upon your body so acutely, he said, you're going to be in a wheelchair in five years. 
and I still didn't believe him. I went on and I was like, oh, I'm fine because I had kind of gained mobility and was doing better. And I started noticing symptoms coming back. You know, part of my face was numb. My hands were getting numb. And I humbled myself and I said, Lord, show me what to do because I believe you, but I believe that medicine is something you'll use to heal me as well. So I humbled myself, contacted the doctor and ended up getting on treatment. And with that treatment, it helped me to uh, not have the uh, total disability that he was predicting because he was saying that I would be totally wheelchair bound within five years. And so at first they couldn't find a treatment for me. We went through different, you know, shots and IV therapies and all kind of stuff. And finally, after um, some time, we found a medicine that worked for me. Um, And it was a every six month IV. That was the most consistent medicine. But after a few years, which was 2020, um, I remember um, just I was just going through a lot with that medicine. It was kind of not doing what it was doing in the beginning. And so I began to have uh, these episodes with my legs where I was weak. You know, I would just and I end up falling. I think it was around August or September of 2020. And as I was uh, walking in my house, my le- it was as if someone tripped me. My knees got very weak and I just kind of went down. Well, I went to the hospital. They kept me overnight. And um, it was the fact that in between the medicine, when you take it every six months, it only lasts up to four months. So within those two months, I would have no coverage for any attacks and they couldn't give me any more medicine to counteract that. And I was laying in the bed, unable to really, you know, be as mobile as I want. I had to get my scooter out, my uh, uh, walker with the rollers on it and my cane. And I was moving around the house and kind of more in the bed than I was up walking. But I remember I had ran across uh, on Facebook, World Mission Alliance advertisement. And at the time, I was just going through a lot in my mind and my heart. I knew that God had called me to, you know, do missions and, you know, uh, to an international ministry. But I was just at a loss as to how in this condition was I going to do what God really called me to do. Let's pause here for just a moment. I want to ask you, during that time, and it it had been several years that you have been dealing with this condition, how did that affect you? emotionally and spiritually, you know, you believed for healing uh, before you sought medical treatment and that sort of didn't go the way you expected. And it's interesting, you said, I humbled myself and I turned to uh, uh, medical help, which is really interesting. I want to talk about that too in a little bit, but what did you feel during that time? You went from an active, mobile person Suddenly, and a very faithful person too, suddenly to being, you know, attacked by a disease that you didn't expect to happen. It happened from a flu shot. Again, something very unexpected. How did you feel? Uh, were you angry with God? Did you question God? At the time, I thought in my mind, I was thinking this is an attack of the enemy because I was so busy. I was like, you know, really doing things for God. And I thought, at the time it came that this was an attack of the enemy. But in my mind, as I continue to deal with it, sometimes when something is acutely coming upon us, we can hold our stance. We can, you know, be strong. But when it lasts longer than we anticipate, when the the, the days turn into weeks, the weeks into months, the months into years, then you begin to ask God, you know, you know, the things that I believe that you called me to do. Did you really call me to do it? Because I finally found myself laying on my bed, you know, unable to function the way I'm used to functioning. And so I'm like, God, how can I go to the nations or be in the mission field and do all of this when my legs don't work, you know, and and they may get out? You know, how can I be an effective minister, a witness for you in this condition? And I said, Lord, you know, um, I, I began to just resolve in my mind that if this is the way I had to be, um, that I, uh, there was somewhere God had for me to go, that if I was in a wheelchair, it would still be a testimony to him. I had to believe that because I knew that he was, he's not a man that he should lie. So somehow he's going to get glory out of this. I don't know whether I'll be standing or sitting or rolling, <laughs> but he's going to get glory. And I had to 
eventually come to that place. But it was some dark days. There were some days when I was depressed, when I was sad, when I was, you know, feeling like, um, you know, trying not to be hopeless because I knew that I my hope was in, is in Jesus. But physically, you know, not being able to be as active with my children or do things that I would normally do, even with the church and outings and things like that. At times it was overwhelming, but I had to, you know, pull from my faith. And even I got on uh, uh, different uh, support groups online with people that had MS, African-Americans with MS, people that were taking the type of medicine that I was taking, those type of support groups. And I would just, you know, days when I was down, I would type it and, you know, get responses from those who were uh, in the same condition or familiar condition. And it helped. Amen. Well, and another question I want to ask you. So, you know, for people of faith, when they face with an illness that is is really uh, serious, and, and this is a fine line, do we? So what is faith saying that I'm not going to seek medical treatment, I believe in God, I believe in his power to heal me? Or you know, giving a chance to medical science to help. Um, So there is that fine line, you know, is it, am I showing lack of faith when I'm choosing to pursue the medical route? And so I'm curious, you mentioned the word, I humbled myself and I sought uh, medical help. Can you expound on that? Yes. When the doctor told me that I had MS, I, my natural reaction was just tears because of the thoughts of other people that I cared for. A lady in particular, she was an African-American woman. I had gone to her house and she was laying in a bed in her living room and she was totally bedridden. She had bed sores on her body and she couldn't do for herself. And her diagnosis was multiple sclerosis. I never forgot it. That woman was etched in my mind because I remember leaving her house. And I said, God, I don't want to ever end up like this woman. I didn't even know anything in would happen in the future, but I remember this lady. And so uh, when I was diagnosed, that was the first thing came to my mind. I cried, I prayed, and I started thinking about God is a healer. You know, I, I don't have to, you know, deal. I'm, I'm healed. But I think part of my saying I was healed and not wanting to deal with it was denial. I think I was in denial that this possibly could be happening to me. And so in my denial and just latching hold to faith and saying, okay, I'm, I'm healed. I'm not taking any medicine. I'm just claiming my healing through the scriptures, which is a good thing. Quoting scriptures and believing God and, you know, exercising our faith is good. But I've learned through the years and even in my personal experience that God has Christian doctors, he has people out there that, you know, he has anointed, you know, to care for people in their illness and administer medicine, which can also be a method of healing. And so I had to realize that my doctor was possibly right, (laughs) because in my mind, I was thinking, oh, no, it was like I was on a mission to prove to him that, you know, God can heal me without this medicine. I'm going to be walking and, and regardless to what you say. But God began to help me to realize that he was presenting some facts to me about an illness that was truly there. But the truth of the matter is that I am healed through Jesus Christ. But there's a process of healing that we must walk through. And part of that is building our faith. But also sometimes with illnesses, we have to uh, allow medicines, vitamins, nutrients to build up our bodies back to a place of wholeness. Because sometimes through some sicknesses, it may be because of our diet or some things that we have not been on top of with exercising and releasing stress and not allowing ourselves to uh, uh, be active and exercising. So it's things that we uh, need to do, but we don't do. And sometimes connecting with that doctor, connecting with that particular program or whatever it is that they're presenting can be the method that leads to our healing and wholeness. But we have to humble ourselves and realize there's some things that we may not have been doing right with our body, drinking water and eating the right foods and those type of things. So humbling myself and, and acknowledging that I was in denial. 
because I didn't want to accept the diagnosis, but also realizing that God had given me a doctor who went a step further than the other doctors when I had the first episode. And he searched out until he found what was wrong with me. And then he presented an option of a method of healing through medication and that God was using him in a way that I wasn't really open to yet, but he was humble and he was a sweet man. And he presented it to me in a way that he wasn't pushy, but he let me know the consequences of me being proudful and not accepting medication that I could, you know, uh, end up in a wheelchair, but it didn't have to be that way. You know, take this medication, work on trying to get healthy and you may avoid this total disability of never being able to walk again. Thank you for sharing this. This is a powerful witness in itself. Uh, you know, the things that we can learn in the process of our affliction and in the process of a trial um, are extremely valuable for our future. You know, it builds in us deeper understanding of God and, and uh, uh, more pure nature, you know, um, but, uh, going back to your story. So at the moment when you're not feeling again, God suddenly places with before you an opportunity of foreign missions. It seems like the timing is not good, right? The, um, you know, negative uh, side effects of this illness. And, and all of a sudden you see, uh, an opportunity to fulfill your dream and missions. So, what happens next? I was looking at Facebook and found World Mission Alliance, and I was at the time really on my bed of affliction. And I, I looked, and I was just at a point where I just I saw uh, one of the videos on your website about Argentina, and it was on that particular trip. There was an elderly lady. There was some other people who looked like they weren't particularly healthy. <laughs> I said, if they can take them, I know they can take me. <laughs> and I was like, Lord, is this the agency that may be the avenue that I, that you're presenting before me that can help me accomplish what I know you've put in my heart to do, and that is to go to the nations and, and help people. And so uh, what really caught my attention at first was the trip to Israel, because I had been to Israel before. And so I said, oh, they're going to Israel. And then as I researched and saw all the people and all the trips and all the testimonies of people going that were particularly in, uh, you know, uh, wonderful shape, you know. And I said, well, Lord, is this is this it? So I put in an application and I prayed and I said, Lord, if this is you, if this is what you want for me, then I'm going to take a chance. You know, I'm believing that this is a door you're opening for me. And so from that point, I just got accepted in uh, World Mission Alliance um, in the uh, uh, mission field. And so it has just been an answer to my prayers and um, so much fulfillment and that um, sick people or people that deal with illness have a tendency to focus on ourselves, what we're feeling, what we're aching, where the pain is, what's going on constantly because uh, illness or sickness kind of makes you hypersensitive to what what your body is experiencing. And so I've learned that through these times when I'm going through these things to put my focus on how I can help someone else. And so that always seems to make me feel better and have a better outlook that there's always someone worse off than we are. And if, even if we've come a little ways and we have not made the progress that we think we should have made, looking at someone else's situation and realizing that it could have been worse, I could be them, but my little glimmer of hope can give them a, a ray of sunshine in what they're going through, just made me picture things differently and realize that no matter what state of health I'm in, if God has appointed me to go on a mission trip or be a part of a team, then he gives me the strength and the fortitude to do that so that I can be an encouragement to someone else. 
And it is incredible. You know, I have observed you um, in Mexico and in Egypt and the Republic of Georgia, and you're getting ready to go to Ethiopia here pretty soon. Yes. None of these are easy journeys. None of I know the schedule of our mission trips, and it's quite intense. And uh, yes. you being able to keep up with it and, and being so fruitful and so powerful, it's nothing short of a miracle of God. And, you know, the, the, our series is Changed Lives, Changed Lives. And, and God has shown you through this experience and some other experiences that you have gone through. If we have time, we'll touch on that. You know, God uh, uh, has shown you how he can take you through a valley, but bring you out victoriously. And, and that is a powerful testimony that can, um, like you said, give a glimmer of hope to someone else. And uh, can you share some of the um, examples how your story equipped you to perhaps help someone else in a similar situation? Yes. Um, I know that being um, going through the sickness and illness, um, just being at my local church, has been um, a challenge because um, people are used to me being the one taking care of a lot of things. And and so when the time came and I was unable to do those things, um, it, it kind of hit me hard and made me feel just so unable, uh, kind of useless. But as time went on, you know, not only had I had to accept that sometimes sickness is a part of the thing that, you know, we go through in life. It's just life and life experiences and so um, I've met other people in church that uh, in my local church that have gone through similar situations of uh, inability to uh, uh, move around and do the things that they were doing. One of our elders had gotten uh, sick with a stroke and had been suffering some of those effects. And so she was recovering from a lot of things uh, with the pain and um, being able to just continue on with the work of the Lord. And God had coupled us together some time back. And I thank God for the days that she's down and feeling, you know, like she can't make it. The Lord would have me speak a word to her. And the times when I felt like I couldn't make it or going through similar situations, you know, she would be there to encourage me. So just knowing that uh, um, it's okay. I think giving ourselves the permission that it's okay, you know, to accept your current circumstances, not as your permanent reality, but just what you're dealing with right now, you know, God is able to take us through those times and, you know, enjoying experiencing God's healing in the moment. Because sometimes we're looking so far ahead. I got all this stuff to do, Lord. I need you to heal me now, you know, so I can go here and go there. But I've noticed that even um, uh, one of the scriptures they've talked about when Jesus had healed the 10 lepers, it was in the going that they really begin to see the manifestation of the leprosy clearing. And the one that turned back to say, thank you, he was not only healed, but made whole. And so taking the time to, to, to go where God tells us to go, do what God tells us to do and walk out our healing the whole journey. I remember every trip going on every mission trip. A lot of times I start out alone. And sometimes I'm dealing with challenges, you know, walking through the airport or things like that. And God will remind me, I'll hear a, a still small voice saying, I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, and it gives me a little more motivation to keep going to, you know, get to the next gate or get to that next area where I need to, to in order to make that that trip that I need to make. And so it's, it's encouraging um, to have the Holy Spirit, the Lord, along with you everywhere you go, because he never leaves you. And he lets you know that he's there to comfort and to guide you. You know, times I need to sit down, I know to go sit down. Times when I need to say, you know, I'm not going to go out with you guys today. I'm going to take a little rest. I'm learning to listen to the signals of my body and pray and, you know, be strengthened in areas that I need to be strengthened in and to believe God for that healing, but just using his wisdom the whole way through. Wow. You know, it's so beautiful what you're sharing. I feel like it's speaking 
to me um, in particular because I'm a very um, like goal oriented person and and when something slows me down, I'm really wishing deep down inside to skip that part and move forward. But you know, um, God is in every season of our lives. You know, in and the small in the slow season and in the fast season and uh, appreciating each one of these seasons is is important you know because he has something for us and so i've made i've made mental notes <laughs> thank you thank you for sharing uh what you did um uh, and so you had have gone through another very painful season in your life before you faced the challenge of ms and that was recovering from the pain of losing your baby in miscarriage. And uh, can you share a little bit about that season and what God has taught you through that season? That was, I think, one of the hardest seasons I have ever gone through in my whole life because I was newly married and also entering and I had just moved to a new city and you know got to a new ministry. It was a lot of new things going on in my life. And I was just uh, feeling like I was getting ready to launch out into the call of God of being a minister and all that. And I had been married maybe about a month or so, a month and a half, and found out I was pregnant. Oh, my goodness. In my mind, I'm thinking, oh, this is this is great, you know, because I had always wanted to have a baby. And actually, that Sunday before I found out, one of the ministers at the church had uh, gave me a word of prophecy that I was going to have a baby sooner than I thought. I didn't know it was that soon, though. <laughs> so in that episode, um, I ended up finding out I was pregnant and immediately in my mind started experiencing some anxiety because I noticed some symptoms of things happening that I wasn't sure about. And I was just uh, really worried. And I think about four months along, I ended up realizing they realized that I had miscarried the baby and it was devastating because I was counting on that pregnancy, to go full term, to have that child. And my life just, it just felt like somebody had just took all the air out of me. And I remember trying to be okay. But the more it seemed I tried to be okay, the more I just found myself weeping uncontrollably. I found myself just lost. And I remember the day I had come back from the hospital, I had been crying and crying and crying. And I awoke from sleep because that gave me some medicine to rest. And I woke up and my eyes kind of barely opened. But I remember looking up and I saw a figure. It was like a tall, tall person. And I knew it wasn't, wasn't anybody in the house. But the reason why I woke up is because I felt someone kiss me on my forehead. I felt the impression of the lips on my forehead. And I was like, what is that? And I couldn't see the person. It was just me and my husband in the house. And as I went back to sleep, the, it happened again. I felt those lips on my forehead. I said, is that in here? And I opened my eyes. It was a figure in blue, like a royal blue color, very, very tall. I never saw the face, but I could see the, the attire that it was wearing. And I heard the Lord speak to me and said, this was not the promise because he had promised me that I would have a baby. You know, but he was saying in this process, I was thinking that the promise was lost. But he reassured me that that was not the, the promise was not lost and that there was hope. But in me coming to the realization that there was hope, I had to walk through my steps of grief, the grief, the sadness, the anger, the frustration of the whole deal. And I, I went through a process of depression, so depressing that I had tried to take my own life. And um, I remember ending up in a facility talking to a lady um, and she, the nurse, I remember her doing something that I used to do to my patients. She let me cry. She let me just release and tell her my story. That meant everything to me to have somebody to listen. Because a lot of times in miscarriage, you have no, no body to grieve because most of the time in a miscarriage, it may have gone full term. You don't have a, a body like in a, a normal death of a child or person you love. So you're, you're lost with just an image or a thought in your mind of your precious one. And so having that time to grieve and to just really walk through those steps and allow God into those places of 
uh, I felt betrayed. I felt like I had lived for God all my life, young life, had avoided certain things, and I felt like God had let me down. Like where, and I actually wrote a book called "Lord, Where Were You When My Baby Died?" Because I felt like He had deserted me. But in my and growing through those changes, and you know, allowing grief to take its course, and continuing with my relationship with God, I began to understand that God meant me no harm that all things do work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And he began to just minister his healing and his love to me as the years went on. And I began to understand that sometimes we're going to suffer loss. We're going to suffer pain. We're going to suffer grief. But that doesn't mean that God has left us and that he, you know, hates us or that he's paying us back for some terrible sin we've done. But sometimes things are just, it's just life. And we have to live life just like every other person in this world. But the thing that we live life with is that we have Jesus, we have the Holy Spirit, and we have joy that can help us overcome the obstacles of depression and come through those battles of suicide and hopelessness with his help. That's our difference from seeing someone that's not a Christian and someone that is a Christian is that we go through these things and we have the anchor in God's word and through his spirit and with his help and his grace, we overcome so that we can show others who come to know Jesus how to overcome. But I thank God for the experience because it helped me to help many, many women um, that have come across my path to let them know that Jesus loves them and that he cares and that he will walk with us through these times and comfort us in our our times when we're so angry and so bitter inside because all we want was our child to live, you know, to make it through those difficult times and to know that he's there and that he loves us and that he hasn't forsaken us was, I think, the best comfort for me. This is so rich, America. And, you know, I believe that The sign of a successful and blessed life is when through our trials and through that crushing in life, we can produce sweet fruit. You know, instead of bitterness, resentment, anger, we we produce fruit that build others up, that helps others to go through similar experiences. And so that's your life and your story is a great example of that. Now, if someone wanted to purchase this book that you wrote, uh, Where Were You When My Baby Died? Is it available on Amazon or how people could get a hold of that book? Um, it was on Amazon. I'm not sure. I haven't checked. I've been doing most of my uh, people just contact me through um, uh, Messenger on Facebook. And I usually just use Cash App. They can Cash App me or mail the monies to me. And then I usually just mail it out myself uh, to them personally. So um, it's America Quinn. I'm on Facebook uh, as America Quinn on Messenger. You can message me. Um, and that's usually how I do it. I, I'm going to get better with uh, technology. Thank you so much for being on this podcast. Thank you for sharing your heart. And I look forward to serving together with you, whether it's on the mission field, on a foreign mission field, or here in the United States. Amen. Thank you so much for having me. This has been just a wonderful experience. I believe that the sign of a successful and blessed life is when, through our trials, we can produce sweet fruit and build up those around us. American story is such a great example of that, and her story of faith and strength is truly inspiring. At World Missions Alliance, we believe that changed lives change lives, just like you heard in this interview. If you would like to learn more about what we do at World Missions Alliance, visit our website, rfwma.org, and perhaps you can find out how you can connect to your greater purpose. Thank you for listening. Until next time, I'm Helen Todd. Limitless Spirit Podcast is produced by World Missions Alliance. We believe that changed lives change lives. If you want to see your life transformed by Christ's love, Or if you want to help those who are hurting and hopeless and discover your greater purpose in serving Christ through short-term missionary work, check out our website, rfwma.org, and find out how to get involved.